A very good morning from the KTN News Centre. Thank you for joining us on the broadcast this Sunday morning, the 29th day of October 2017. It is. It has been three days since Kenyans go went to the ballot for that repeat presidential election, and uh, they are still waiting on the Independent Electoral and Boundaries Commission to announce uh, the winner of that repeat poll. There has been a lot that has been happening. We are here on the show for the next two hours or so to try and dissect some of those issues. We'll talk about what's happening in, in the newspaper dailies this morning. We'll uh, look a lot. We'll, we'll, we'll take a look at the numbers puzzle that has been discussed much by Kenyans, especially on social media. Uh, those percentages of voter turnout, uh, confusion as IBC has been struggling to give the real voter turnout in that repeat presidential election on Thursday. We'll also talk about uh, what happened in four of those, especially in four of, uh, of those Nyanza counties uh, where the elections were postponed indefinitely. What is the way forward? IBC are yet to give the way forward on that. But what is the state of the nation in general? Um, where, what next for the National Super Alliance or is it uh, the National Resistance Movement? What next for Jubilee and Uhuru? Will there be a legitimacy question raised over Uhuru Kenyatta's victory if announced by the IABC, declared winner of the repeat presidential poll? All those questions, we shall be trying to answer them for you. My guests are already with, with me here. But first, uh, let's uh, cross live to the IABC National Talent Center at the Bombers of Kenya, where our senior reporter, Rita Tinina, is uh, to try and uh, tell us what uh, to expect, what are some of those latest numbers looking like. Rita, good morning. Uh, what uh, can you tell us? And are we expecting the IABC to announce the winner any time today? Diaspora from Tanzania, Uganda, Rwanda, uh, Kigali, uh, Burundi, sorry, and South Africa. So um, <clears throat> the total number of registered voters in diaspora is 4,393. John Okot got 19, Mohammed Dida got 11, Kwajirongo got zero, Jafet Kaluyu zero, Uhuru Kenyatta 1,298, Michael Mwaura got two, Joseph Nyaga one, Raila Odinga 20, total valid votes 1,351, Spoiled, 11. <clears throat> Next is Nyaribari Chachi, Chache in Kisi, and <clears throat> Total number of registered voters, voters 77,831. John Okot got 98. Mohammed Dida got 59. Kwajirongo got 26. Japheth Kaluyu, 31. Uhuru Kenyatta, 21,238. Michael Mwaura got 24, uh, Joseph Nyaga 45, Raila Odinga 364, and total valid votes 21,885, rejected votes 161. Next is the constituency of Msambweni in Kwale County. Total number of registered voters, 68,621. John Okot got 21. Mohammed Dita, 62. Kwajirongo, 5. Joseph Kaluyu, Japheth Kaluyu, uh, 8. Uhuru Kenyatta, 7,145. Michael Maura, six. Joseph Nyaga, nine. Raila Odinga, 275. Total valid votes, 7,531. 
rejected votes 65. Next, next is the constituency of Kieni in Nyeri County. Total number of registered voters, 109,001. Um, John Aukot, 64. Mohamed Dida, 41. Kwajirongo, 22. The Independent Electoral and Boundaries Commission, they are still uh, giving those numbers. Uh, we shall be trying to get back to Rita Tinina at the Bomas of Kenya once that uh, a briefing by the IBC is over for her to just uh, you know, give us a summary of the latest numbers and from how many of the uh, more than 40,000 polling stations across the country. Now let me introduce my guest this morning uh, very quickly. I have with me political risk analyst um, Dismas Mokua. I have with me political commentators Mark Bichachi and uh, Hezbon Owila and political strategist Mutinda Kavemba. Good morning, gentlemen. Thank you for joining me on the, on the show this morning. Thank you. All right, I want us to uh, very quickly take a look at some of the big stories in the main newspapers this morning before we get into the issues trying to dissect this repeat presidential election. I start with the Sunday Nation, the numbers question. We'll get into this in more detail, but uh, this must, uh, a lot has been said since uh, Thursday, or is it Friday, um, when Chebukati gave the figure of 48% as what was expected to be the voter turnout before revising it to 34% and you know, there was a lot of uh, questions being raised. Uh, what is your take on this whole issue? Well, you know, we've said here uh, times above number that uh, Mr. Chibukati should have created uh, predictable systems for unpredictable outcomes. And uh, he needs to know that uh, his role as the chairman of uh, IBC is, is more of a, a communication role than a, a technical opposition. So when he comes out giving numbers and in a few minutes he decides to review them downwards, it's really unacceptable. For instance, the first time he came on here and he said we've had a 48% voter turnout, he did not give us the basis on which he was making that announcement. Now, 48% of votes, registered voters, number of people who have cast the ballots, mm -hmm. he, he did not specify. So when we're in this kind of a sensitive period and then you keep on... Um, fluctuating, you know, behaving like a pendulum, left, right, left, right, giving a lot of numbers, you give people the opportunity to start engaging in uh, rumors and uh, propaganda. Because now it's very easy for any rational Kenyan to come to the conclusion mm -hmm. that uh, the reason why Chibukati doesn't have the numbers, is not giving out structured numbers, is that uh, there is uh, somebody playing around with uh, figures. And it may just be the case that uh, Chibukati is very honest because he's relying on the numbers he's been given by the staffers, but he needs to be very consistent in his uh, communications. Uh, Mr. Isbono, who is a teacher of uh, communications, will let you know mm -hmm. that uh, being consistent in communication is so strong. But when Kenya is in a volatile situation like this, you're giving us numbers left, right, and center, we do not know who to believe. Then this is further complicated by the fact that the international media is also giving an entirely different number. A number of international agencies are saying that the voter turnout is 27%. So you're beginning to wonder, yes. are we going to trust the international media? The observers this time around, they're very quiet, they're very mute, they're not giving out any numbers. So we really don't know where we are seated. And uh, these are uh, Batrace's Rayla's uh, position when he called for the boycott. Mm -hmm. When he said that IBC is not ready to run a free, fair, and credible election. All right. Wherever Raila Odinga is, is making so much political capital out of this. And again, you recall yesterday, the Deputy President, Honorable William Ruto, also gave out his set of numbers and invited people to go to the portal, to the IBC portal, to check those numbers. All right. For a number of Kenyans who are very excited, when they went to the portal, they did not find the numbers that the DP was talking about. So now, for the ordinary Kenyan, you are left wondering what is actually happening in Kenya. And thanks to Chebukati, the weakest commissioner we have ever had, Kenya is in a volatile situation. Mark, do you agree? Um, I agree that Chebukati is a very... I'm not sure at whether to call him a poor communicator because that's uh, an abuse to poor communication. I, I think he's just not a communicator at all. Uh, Chebukati is, is um, misleading in his statements and the reason why you can say that with confidence is you cannot say three statements about the same thing at the same time. Now, Chebukati's confusion notwithstanding, mm -hmm. I would stop... Uh, short of saying that the IEBC has been unable to deliver because we know for a fact that the Form 34 A's and B's have successfully been put 
into the portal. And we know that uh, from various sources that we've seen that the numbers uh, tally in terms of a lot of the forms. Mm -hmm. So I don't think it's incompetence on, on the part of IEBC. I think it's a communication uh, problem on the part of Chebukati. And we've seen this from the beginning. In, in fact, I am beginning to think that the real chair of the IEBC, as far as communication was concerned, was Ms. Akombe, because she had the, 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 the presence of mind to be able to deliver a consistent narrative through time. What Chebukati is doing is, is, is highly dangerous. It's not acceptable. Mm -hmm. But I I disagree with, uh, with, with, with Dismas when he then concludes uh, that this is proof of the incompetence of the IBC. In fact, I quite disagree because let's remember the issues the IBC faced on August 8th. They were all to do with transmission. And as we sit here today, none of us can say that IBC failed in transmission because on the night of elections, most, if not all, of the Form 34As were already into the portal. And that tells you that they've done an excellent job. In fact, by 9 p.m., by 11 p.m. that night, there were only 2,000 of the polling stations that actually voted that had not given their Form 34As. The rest had, okay, which is an absolute improvement. And one of the things that we need to learn as Kenyans, let us separate our political differences and our political vices, for that matter, from our institutions, because casting unfair aspersions on the IBC that are not based on fact is not going to build our nation. All right. Ben, let me just persuade that, that point. There's a very high probability that uh, you cannot communicate what you do not have. So we could be having two levels. There are initially, Chibukati has been given wrong numbers and communicating the wrong numbers in a very poor manner. When you are the head of an organization, you've been given numbers and you're not very sure. You need to engage in a quality control, especially in a situation where every single word from your mouth can create trouble for the nation. So it's not sufficient to say that uh, maybe it's getting the wrong numbers, but uh, you've created an environment whereby every person who is watching KBA, uh, who is watching IBC is wondering what is happening. You are, ge you are getting several sets of numbers right. from IBC itself. And then last night, one of the commissioners on uh, national TV indicated, wait a minute, we can no longer place reliance on uh, the Kim's technology, that it could be giving us uh, erroneous numbers. Right. Then now you begin to wonder, Kenya has invested a fortune in that uh, Kim's technology. And you know, in the absence of technology, it's so easy to manipulate the numbers. So now you are beginning to ask yourself, what really is happening at IBC? Right. What is the backstory at IBC? And then maybe the last question, the, 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 or rather the, uh, the, the last position, the tweet message sent out by the chairman, is he actually the person who sent out that tweet? Because initially he spoke about 40 years, then he revised it downwards. Who is sending those messages? Are those messages authorized? Or is there uh, some sort of cartel at IBC causing all this confusion? But at the end of the day, Ben, people want to know that the resources invested at IBC are going to deliver accurate results. It doesn't matter who is going to win, because at this stage it's very clear who, is, who the winner is. But people at least want to have confidence that the technology is working and nobody is manipulating it. All right, we'll, we'll get into that numbers conversation in more detail uh, in, in, a, in a short while. But let's go back to the National Talent Center, the Bombers of Kenya, and speak to our Rita Tinina, who has been camping there, you know, to just uh, bring us the latest as the IBC uh, continues to verify those results. Rita, good morning. What uh, do we know this morning? Uh, good morning to you, Ben. Uh, this morning, as it stands now, uh, 200 this is results from 232 constituencies have been verified. That means we have 32 constituencies to go. That is, if you minus uh, the 27 count constituencies uh, in which uh, the election was postponed by the IEBC chairman. And from those 232 constituencies, the valid votes are 6,841,160. And of those votes, uh, President Uru Kenyatta has 6,732,618 uh, with a percentage, uh, the voter turnout is 42%, 42.87%. Uh, 42 uh, but Ben, a few odd things. I was even following up on your conversation there. First, the issue of the Kim's kits, which uh, uh, Wafula Chebukati and Commissioner Gulia first touched on uh, during their press briefing yesterday afternoon. And what many perhaps uh, uh, people are asking is that the Kim's kits once you uh 
put in your fingerprint. It is meant to automatically send your statistic. And by yesterday, the commission was saying that it cannot give the exact number of people who voted so as to get a voter turnout. Perhaps that is one thing you will be exploring in your discussion, but that really is the essence of the KIEMS kits. So as of now, the country still doesn't know how many people turned out to vote. Another odd thing is that the commission is not giving a percentage of the voter turnout based on the registered number of voters, the 19.6 million. And what they are saying, for instance, now this 42.87 percent voter turnout is based on the voter turnout in those constituencies, 232 uh, constituencies, those people who registered there versus those who turned out to vote. That is the uh, system or the formula that the IEBC is using instead of the number of people who voted vis-a-vis -vis the total number of registered voters in the country. Ben, so we are still waiting uh, for the verification as soon as they verify the commissioners are coming out, they're announcing, and then the returning officers are giving those results to the IEBC chairman. That is the physical forms. The returning officers who have bought, brought the physical forms, forms 34A and forms 34B, here to the National Telling Center. But on the IEBC portal, 261 forms have been uploaded. Uh, that leaves only three forms to go. That is if you add the 27 uh, constituencies in which the elections uh, were postponed, it leaves only three constituencies to upload their statistics on the portal. And in terms of the polling centers, uh, 40,000. Out of the 40,883 uh, polling stations across the country, 37,183 have posted their results, uh, leaving 3,700. If you remove again the polling stations in the constituencies, and that is 3,635, the polling centers in the constituencies whose election was postponed, that leaves only 65 uh, polling centers to post their Form 34As and only three uh, constituencies to post their Form 34 base. So we'll still be here uh, keeping an eye on things for you. Right now, the hall uh, quite empty, perhaps in the afternoon. Yesterday in the afternoon, we saw a few people gathering here, some observers, some diplomats, uh, politicians as well as well. But going by the pace, perhaps they will be able to verify the other 32 constituencies today. But remember, in areas uh, such as Trukana West, there was an election yesterday. Maybe it will take some time uh, to get the results here. But outside this auditorium, uh, the scenery is sort of changing. Security has been tight to get into the bombers of Kenya from the main gate. Getting into this auditorium is also another security process. And this morning, the police around here, two lorry roads of police have arrived, some of them with uh, anti-riot gear, so we don't know whether they are preparing for an event later on in the day, but of course enhanced security today as compared to the past uh, three days. Ben. Rita, uh, talk to us about the verification process. Uh, there are some people saying that it is much more thorough this time round and that it may take longer to announce the winner of this repeat presidential election. This might spill over into next week or something. Uh, talk to us about that verification process. How thorough, how slow, fast is it? Well, clearly the IEBC seems to be very keen about what it is doing. That is after uh, the Supreme Court ruling saying that the IEBC chairman did not verify the results before announcing. Even uh, as of now, even after the Supreme Court then ruled, he has no power to do anything, even if he was to uh, notice any errors. But this time they are very thorough. Last time, this is a process that the IEBC did not go through. The returning officers did not bring their Form 34As and Forms 34B here for verification before the IEBC announced those results. So what is happening after the polls closed in the polling centers, uh, the presiding officers there scanned the results form, uh, sent that to the portal, then took the forms to the returning officer at the constituency level. At the constituency level, the returning officer then collated all the forms 34A from his or her constituency filled in a Form 34B, and those are the forms that they are bringing here. Once they get here, uh, they are giving them to desks uh, just down there at the auditorium, seven desks, seven clusters where IEBC officials and then going through the forms, ensuring that the statistics that are on Form 34A correspond to what has been filled in Form 34B. Eventually, when all is uh, verified, then the IEBC chairman, the national returning officer, will then fill Form 34C, 
which will be used to announce uh, the president or the winner of the presidential election. So this time, Ben, the IEBC uh, seemingly very, very uh, thorough or being just very careful with what they do. And if they were to notice any errors uh, going by the Supreme Court ruling, when the IEBC chairman uh, went to court seeking to have a clarification on his role, and this was based on an, a ruling by the Court of Appeal in June, which said that the IEBC chairman cannot do anything. He cannot audit, he cannot uh, correct, he cannot uh, uh, modify any results, even if he found out any errors. So this time, if he was to find uh, that there was some uh, distortion of the figures, what he can do is that before announcing the final result, in his statement, he would perhaps want to inform Kenyans these are the final results, but in them, this and these uh, errors are there, but I can do ma nothing much about them, but this is the final result uh, with these errors. Ben. Thank you so much, Rita, our senior reporter, Rita Senior. They are just uh, keeping vigil there, They're following up uh, the updates from the IBC for us. Uh, we shall be hoping to get uh, the final tally very soon. Gentlemen, let me come to you, Hasbon. Um, what's, your, what's your take on this numbers puzzle, as we are calling it? Uh, ben, the biggest issue here is, is, is the number of uh, people who went to the polling stations to cast their votes. And therefore, when you hear the IBC come out and say that they cannot rely on Kim's kit uh, to tell them the number of people who voted, uh, you know, you, you start asking yourself so many questions. Because going back to the history of why we even moved to, the, to an electronic voter transmission and an identification system, you realize that it's because of the dead voters that we used to have, because of the cooking of results between uh, the returning officers and the National Tallying Center. Therefore, it is, it is really curious when you want to talk about numbers and then the system that we invested in seriously to mitigate against uh, you know, uh, the, 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 the inflation of the number of people who have voted skewed towards one candidate being said not to be working. I mean, that one raises a lot of questions. And, you know, the, the whole credibility of this election will be anchored on the number of people who have voted. The more, the better. And therefore, you, you have a situation where the only way to ascertain the number of people who have voted through Kim's is now being disputed by the same, same body that is supposed to give us free, fair, and credible election. Mm -hmm. So from where I sit, I, I am beginning to identify more, you know, with what Dismas is saying, that it is not just about communication. It is about uh, what is happening and the person who is communicating. Maybe the person who is communicating is not even private to what is going on behind the scenes. So he has information. He may want to <coughs> communicate that information. But the delay between the time that he needs to communicate that information and the time that he is communicating, there is a lot that is going on. If you are relying on the Kim's kit, you know, yesterday I had uh, Commissioner Goulier talk about alphanumeric identification, guys who could not be identified by the Kim's but went with their IDs. Mm -hmm. And you begin to ask yourself, who are these guys? And to what extent are we sure that these guys actually showed up in the polling stations? And therefore, to me, you look at the bigger picture of the number question, and you start asking yourself, could it be the reason why IBC is finding it difficult to communicate in a very free and flawless manner? Because essentially, yeah, any system like IBC and the way it is funded, you'd expect them to have a communication mechanism before the election to understand that this is exactly what is going to happen. In case of anything, this is how we are going to communicate. At no point were we told that the official communication uh, point for IBC's uh, Chebukati's Twitter handle and the extent to which we have three different sets of communication communicated by the same person in two different media, we begin to ask ourselves, is there anything that is happening behind the scene? And I think it is incumbent upon IBC to now take a, take a step further and start telling us that these are the polling stations where this number of people were identified outside the Kim's kit. This is the reason and uh, this is specifically the number. Rather than blanketly, you know, tell Kenyans that, you know, there are guys who could not be identified through the Kim's kit, and uh, the polling officers identify them through the alphanumeric and their IDs. To me, I think that is, that is not even shooting themselves in the foot. It is shooting themselves in the heart. All right. But secondly, I think I also, it's also important to note that this was a very fairly simple electoral process, you know, 
we, we may not really have a predetermined system that we can actually predict, but we could actually predict the winner. But now, we are going to have a winner whose uh, win is going to be compromised by what IBC is doing. All of us knew that President Uru Kenyatta was going to win. But the many things that IBC is, 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 is doing left, right, and center is now bringing into question so right. many things about what they are doing. Mutinda, what is your take on this? Why, well, how would you explain the different numbers given by, from, different, from different media houses, uh, both local and international, the, the different percentages of the voter turnout? Well, how would you explain this? It is, uh, that is the failure of the IBC to communicate authoritatively on these matters. Because when no official communication is forthcoming, then there is room for people to speculate and even give their own estimates. I, I think one of the failures, I would want to agree with my co-panelists on that aspect of communication, that they've been sending mixed signals on the same issue. But having said that, they have taken time, and uh, Rita Tsinina said that so far they've uh, already verified 232 constituencies. I think, to be fair, the best thing would be, because this is a very easy thing, there was the Kim's identification, there is the alternative that they are talking about, which can also be verified. So the thing is getting to compare the number of people who are identified to having voted, compare that to the Form 34As, then to the Form 34B, and finally to the Form 34C. So that if there are any discrepancies, through, because that is what verification is all about, then people can now authoritatively and with evidence bring out whatever discrepancies that are there. As that now, because of that poor communication from the IBC, it is everybody coming up with their own figures. Because even those who are saying, probably like uh, my co-panelist here has mentioned, some of the international media, they've also not told us authoritatively where they also got their uh, estimates from. So the best thing would be to be very empirical about approaching this thing. Let's first identify how many people voted. Whether it is power, you know, power polling station, using the Kims and whatever other alternative mechanism that the IBC says it used. Then let's compare that to the results as filled in from 34A, 34B, and 34C. If they are in tandem, and if nobody has got any basis to question them, then that will be it. And if anybody has evidence that actually in this form 34A, as per the Kims and the alternative identification mechanism, the, you have captured more people than were captured to have voted, then now we can start raising questions. But as of now, we are, we are generalizing a lot, but I am yet to pick a specific right. case where someone says that clearly the Kims and the alternative identification uh, mechanism says that 8,000 people voted here, yet your results are saying 12,000. It, it makes much more sense when it is done that way. Because you know in politics, just like in war, the, the first casualty is normally the truth. So that's right. why people need to treat whatever is being said with some caution until there is a clear basis to question the authenticity of any of the figures that are being given. We're and that's why I'm saying that right. the figures we should start using to challenge are the ones that have been verified from 232 the ones being given at BOMAS. Be because Let's those ones, even the IABC, has owned up that now these are the right. figures we are officially given. Let's take a quick commercial file. break here on Sunday edition. Uh, hold that thought, uh, Dismas, I can see you itching to talk. But we, when we come back, we'll take a look at uh, this issue of the numbers puzzle in much more detail. We'll talk about what Rita did allude to there, uh, saying what the IABC is basing the percentage of the voter turnout on. Uh, on the number of people registered in those particular constituencies which voted rather than the uh, total number of registered voters in the country. That is the 19, more than 19 million voters. We'll talk about that as well as why this issue is uh, a big issue. Uh, why? Because like uh, somebody said here, uh, everybody knew Uru Kenyatta will win this. It was a non-contest. It was a no-contest. But why is it a big issue? Is it about uh, the issue of the legitimacy of a president Uru Kenyatta win in this repeat poll? Those are the questions we'll be trying to answer even as we speak about the numbers. Don't go too far. This is Sunday edition.